Bookcase and Coffee presents Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. Hey everyone, welcome to a quick shot of romance. I am Becky and joining me for this episode is podcast contributor Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hey, Becky. Um, Okay, so I kind of strong armed Rachel into reading (laughs) this book with me. (laughs) I did, didn't I? You did. It's it's been on my TBR for a long time, but I haven't gotten to it, and uh, you gave me a reason to get to it. <laughs> so you are so nice about this, but really, <laughs> so we are reading "Wild with You" by Layla Hagen. This is book two in her Connor family series, and if you've listened to the podcast for any amount of time, Layla Hagen writes what I think are some of the best family series romance that's out there. I mean, I love that. Yeah, and a couple of her more recent series. Yeah, I've read a couple of her more recent series that came out in like 2021, and I really enjoyed them. So I immediately, whenever her Bennett family or Connor family was on sale, or there was like a buy, spend $25, get $6 free on Kindle. (laughs) Yeah. I would buy all of her books. So I have them on my Kindle. I just hadn't got to them because, you know, I overcommit on ARCs. We know. We know, but I love the Bennett series. I fell in love with her. I actually found her by accident on the Bennett series because Sebastian York narrates book one in that series. And I have a thing for Sebastian York. And that is honestly how I found her. And then I listened to all the Bennett books. And then I went on to the Connor and I, this is one of my favorite out of those two families and their cousins, but these absolutely can be read on their own. And we'll get to that. Um, Okay, Rachel, read us the synopsis from Goodreads. Wedding organizer Lori Connor loves her job. Planning people's happy ever afters have catapulted the single mother to success. When she meets the best man at the latest wedding, sparks fly. Graham Frazier is more than Lori has bargained for. The charismatic soccer club owner is disillusioned by marriage after his divorce. He's also hot as sin and kisses like a dream. Graham's touch is sizzling. Soon, he bosses her into accepting gifts and spending the night at his house. His excuse is good. She can't possibly drive after working a wedding, can she? Graham pursues her relentlessly, wanting those long legs wrapped around him and her smooth skin under his lips. Then he meets her son, and that boy charms him even faster than his mother did. Before Graham knows it, Lori's son has him wrapped around his little finger. But are Lori and Graham ready for their lives to intertwine in ways they haven't even imagined before? So this book released August 6, 2018. I read this book as the series was dropping, which I am not a good waiter. I'm not. I don't wait very well. Um, Tropes, billionaire, family series, single parent, wedding, close proximity, uh, divorce. uh, And it is a sports romance because Graham... Frazier owns the professional soccer team in Los Angeles. And it is the series name is the Connor family. This is a series of interconnected standalones and the put out percentage was 33%. Um, But it's done in such a way that it didn't, you really felt their chemistry. Yes. It didn't feel like it was fast. No, like it didn't necessarily feel like a slow burn or anything, but you weren't like, oh, wow, we're going there already. Like some books, you get that feeling where you're like, like, oh, oh, this kind of came out of nowhere. This wasn't like that. It it makes sense. Well, and I also think sometimes some of the things that happen in these kind of um, when the it pops at 33 percent, the fact that it's a single mom, sometimes those tend to be a slower burn. But really, their connection and their physical relationship starts before Graham meets the son, but it's done in a very calculated and thoughtful manner. Yes, I completely agree with that. I think that had he met her son and it happened that early, it would have felt kind of inauthentic, but their relationship was completely separate from him from the beginning because of how they met. Right. 
they met because of a work connection. She's so Lori Connor is single mom to Milo. She's the middle sister in the Connor family. She has three brothers and two sisters. Um, and a little bit of their family background that you don't necessarily need. I think you get a little bit in the book. Their parents died when their two older siblings were college age, young adults. And the two older sibling raised the four younger siblings. And Lori is... So I think she's the fourth oldest. There's one brother older than her. Yeah. And then the sister and the other brother are younger than her. Yeah, I think that's correct. Yeah. Um, so Lori got pregnant in medical school. In college. Um, and it changed her dreams when she became pregnant. Her ex, who we do get to see a little bit of Jeff. Um. You hate him? Yeah. Yeah. He's a jerk. Bad I news. Like him. But he adds a night the dynamic of him um in this story, it makes sense. And yes. It's not just done for angst. Like yes. I think it shows Lori's backbone. Yep, I com I completely agree with that. At first, I was kind of nervous. I was like, this could go a couple different ways. And there's one way I hate. And this was not it. <laughs> it I thought it made a lot of sense. It, it certainly didn't make you sympathetic to him at all. And I thought it showed them as a team a little bit. And then you got to see kind of both. Lori and Graham's like different personalities and how they handle issues. So yeah, I thought it was well-placed, honestly. It made sense and it didn't create unnecessary angst with her, with Grant and Lori. And it didn't, it just, I think it just shows you how strong Lori is as a person and how she has been doing this all on her own and has created, so she's a wedding planner. And she kind of stumbled into the business as a party planner for corporate gigs and decided she really liked doing weddings. And now she's one of the most sought after wedding planners in Los Angeles. Yep. And she doesn't ever talk about how she misses medical school or she wishes things would have gone different or she misses Jeff or anything like that. She's perfectly happy. Yeah. She's not just content. She's happy. She also has a great family dynamic and supportive family. Her older sister is Vivian, right? It's Vivian. It's Vivian. Yeah. Uh, I think it is. Anyway, she <laughs> is kind of the mother figure <laughs> in the family. Like, I'm terrible with names. Yeah. You and I with a book with like seven names, we're supposed to remember this is going to be bad. Um, <clears throat> she does a great job of stepping in and helping but not overtaking. I really like that about, I think Layla Hagen does that really well in her books. Each individual member of the family is individual. And there never seems to be a character. There's some characters that are nosy and you get one of my most favorite Layla Hagen characters. You get a small little guest appearance from her in this book. Um, Pippa, she call, is, yeah. calls her cousin Pippa. Pippa's the best. Anyway, you get, they're nosy and they're in each other's business, but they never just overtake them. Right. So yeah, I completely agree with that. Lori's sister really does a good job of keeping Milo and helping, but she doesn't put demands on her. Yes. And you don't feel like anyone is stealing the show at all. And like the other siblings lives aren't super like discussed. Like, yeah. you get little snippets of, like, Haley, her new job, yeah, or Landon and his wife. You get little tiny, tiny snippets where you might be like, oh, who's that? I wonder if they have a book, or when will they be getting a book? But it's never, like, a whole story. <laughs> like, you don't get anyone's life story. 
No. And like Jace, he could have really overtaken this book because he's a professional soccer player that plays for the team that Grant owns. Yes. But he really isn't pushed into, he probably was at that wedding, but there's never this big scene or this big thing where he is in the forefront or in Lori's business. Right. Yeah. Which I appreciated because I don't like when siblings make it about them. Right. I have enough of that in my real life. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about Graham Frazier. So Graham is recently divorced. Um, he's the ultimate damaged hero with really complicated family dynamics. Yes, he was. And he seemed like he was going to be so closed off just based off that like first couple chapters where he's so obviously skeptical of weddings during the first initial meeting i'm like okay like how is this gonna get turned around well and he ends up being um the ultimate good guy like he would give the shirt off his back for his friends Mm -hmm. And, and it's basically what he does yes and i like that he kind of started figuring out that like marriage is he was never like all marriage is bad he was he talked about how amber and matt right yeah Mm -hmm. like he saw them making it to their 60th wedding anniversary yeah and then he was like you know maybe i just wasn't well matched with my ex-wife yeah and he was able to figure that out like pretty early on well, Amber makes some very poignant points in conversation to him that are like, well, did you, were you ever angry? Were you ever sad? You know, because he was really sad during his and Lori's dark moment. And it never really was. That's the other thing I really like about Layla Hagen's books is mm. it's not this dark, tragic breakup. No, it was a fight. It was a fight and he gave her space, which was, I think, respectful. I think it's respectful when someone is hurt because of a decision you made and you give them space to work it out. And when he thought she had had enough time, he went in and said, hey, yep, this is not how we're going to do this. Yep. I like that a lot. Um, okay, so I feel like we should say he really pursues Lori and his attraction to her. There's this great scene where he buys her the dress to wear to the wedding. And I thought she was going to be angry about yep. it. But she wasn't. I did too. I totally thought she was going to be angry about it. I was... And not that I agreed with her being angry about about it but that's what I thought like would have been the predictable move the predictable move would have had her being like pretty ticked off about it and I was glad that she was like you know what like I'm gonna own it like I'm gonna wear this dress and I'm gonna own it um I also loved how with Lori and Graham being a single mom sometimes we get two different kind of single parent romances. One, they're so kid forward that you miss the chemistry, the flirting, the relationship of the characters. Mm -hmm. Or they mention the kid in the beginning and then the kid like goes on vacation by himself. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. But this book is done really well and it feels very real. Like, Lori and Graham consider Milo in everything they're doing, in every discussion they have, but he isn't on page or in every chapter. Yes, which I thought made it realistic and also ensured that Milo didn't steal the show. Right, because he's a cute kid. He Yes. Super cute kid. Like, I love the interactions with him on page. Yeah. The toy store was so much fun and just made me laugh. He totally got Graham 
<laughs> to buy him or when he drinks yes. the orange juice and he gets Graham yes. to give him the orange juice because <laughs> he totally manipulated the guy that didn't have a clue as to what he was supposed to be doing. Yeah. I really thought that was great. Um, but there were little things too. There's some concert tickets and you know, as I was, this is a reread for me. And as I was reading that it was early on and I thought, is he going to show up? Does he show up at the concert? I couldn't remember. And, and he doesn't. And I liked that he kept and was respectful to those boundaries and didn't just put himself into the middle of the situation. Yep. I, I also love that. I love that he owned up when he was like, you know, I, I think, and I probably shouldn't have done it, but I realized it too late. And I also like that he just followed her lead. Yeah. Like, very much was like, he is your kid. I understand. Like, I want him to know we're dating, but I'll follow your lead. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things I really want to talk about is because Layla Hagen has this huge back series. I think there are nine books in the Bennett family. This is a six book series. And then it goes on, I think, to the Gallagher's, which is like eight books. But I find with Layla Hagen, one of the things that Layla does incredibly well is each book stands on its own. Yes. So I, the series I've read of hers, I read as they released. So I read them all in order. So I, I didn't pay attention to whether they stood alone well, because all the characters that were mentioned, I knew who they were. This book, I did not, like, I read as a standalone. I had not read the first book, and I've only read a couple of the Bennett books. So, it, which, you know, this is hard for me to not read series in really order. hard for you. I even asked Very when we picked this book, you were like, just pick any of them. It'll be okay. And I was like, okay. So, that's a lot for me. But I felt like this was a great standalone. Like, yeah. I... Like, there were mentions of the couple from the first book, but very few, honestly. And then, you know, all the other family members and siblings, you, like, get their name and, like, their kind of role in the family. And maybe a little bit about what they do. But that was it. It was very much focused on that couple. Yeah. And I think that's a talent because not everyone who writes these big interconnected family series does this well and Layla Hagen I think does this super well and you will get mentions her worlds collide I believe the Bennett's are mentioned her current series is the Maxwell's of Chicago I believe that there is a mention in book two of buying a ring from Bennett Enterprises and jewelries so there's just again I think that something Layla Hagen does really well is each of her books stand on its own. So if you don't know where to start with her series, seriously, just pick one up that a blurb sounds good to you. Yeah, I think that's extremely accurate. Yeah. And she has a little bit of everything. She has some pro sports people. She has the CEO business guys. She has the working woman, you know, she, the single moms, the single dads. Um, She's got a couple that it's sibling raising siblings. So Honestly, like, I cannot recommend her family series. If you like family series, read Layla Hagen. Okay, let's get our questions in. Uh, did you like this book? Yeah, I love this book. I'm so glad. <laughs> I love this book, and I'm like, I'm always nervous. You know how it is. Um, in the same way. Who would typically like this book? I think if you like like family series if you like some parent romances if you like contemporary romance I think you would like this book yeah um I agree I I love this book and I do think that this is just a great example of a family series that stands on its own and is very contemporary based romance and this is written 2018 it is um four years old and it still very much holds up it doesn't feel dated um or anything like that. So would you recommend this book? I would definitely recommend this book. Same. I do too. I recommend it to everyone just because I think it's one of the best single moms balance of kid type relationships. And the child was 
age appropriate in their actions. Yes, which is super important. It is super important. (laughs) I know. I know. It's not a three-year-old reading a novel. (laughs) Um, Anyway, do you have a book you think we should read for a quick shot of romance? Send us an email at thebees at bookcaseandcoffee.com and we will add it to our TBR. Rachel, thank you so much for joining me for this quick shot of romance. Yeah, thanks for having me, Becky, and for recommending this book. You're welcome. Um, Until next time, everyone, happy reading. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes.